welcome to another episode of What's the Point, the podcast that helps you find meaning and fulfillment for your work and daily life. And this episode, I am thrilled, not just delighted, but absolutely thrilled to be joined by Sylvia Pavoni, who I I encountered speaking and interviewing at a sustainability event. And I must say, Sylvia, I was so struck, as you well know, by the amazing empathy you had in commanding the stage. But not only that, the credibility that you spoke with on such a complex subject. Sustainability is, of course, a very big buzzword at the moment, but it breaks down into so many categories that obviously you well well know, but from the banking sector to ESG to net zero, et cetera. And you made this uh, complex subject very simple to understand, yet backed up with amazing power of of credibility. So that's why Sylvia and I are, are united. And Sylvia, please do introduce yourself way better than I could. Well, Danny, first of all, you're too kind uh, as always, and it's such a pleasure to, to talk to, to you um, uh, and to to do it. Now, a little bit more formally um, on your podcast. So thank you so much. So, um, yes, I'm a journalist. Uh, I'm a journalist and I work uh, at the Financial Times Group. I write on sustainability. And a couple of years ago, I created a new title, which is called Sustainable Views. Uh, and so um, I'm wearing, I feel like I'm wearing this uh, double hat. So the one... Uh, that's the one of the journalists reporting, writing, writing opinion pieces, interviews, uh, doing a lot of public speaking, as you as you mentioned earlier, and also that of um, shall I dare to say an entrepreneur, which isn't quite as such because it's within a company. But you know the process of going through pitching the idea to someone very senior, um, in fact, someone who sits at the board uh, on the board at the FT, and then developing the whole idea makes me feel made me realize that actually there is a little bit of, of that uh, in, in, in me. Um, so that, that's me. That's what I do. Sylvia, and honestly, it's my my joy to know you in, in your spirit and in your passions. And of course, you know, we are united in our heart for, you know, supporting women, women in leadership. But it's not, of course, it's not just women, it's it's pe- it's people. Um, so it's it's incredible to know you and and everything that you you create in the world and everything that you create that is that is good. So let's jump in straight to yes. our podcast. Our podcast, if you don't, if you don't mind. So, Sylvia, for you, for your work and daily life, what would you say is the point of your life? That's such an interesting question, Danny, and it's a uh, it's such a deep question. Mm. So, um, and, and yeah, was you mentioned that that's the, um, uh, what you uh, wanted to what, what the aim of your podcast, uh, and so I was reflecting on on what that means uh, and whether there is a difference between work and and personal life. And maybe the reasons, actually. And for me, um, personally, you know, it's not something, the point of what I do, anything I do, is not necessarily some grand plan of changing the world. It's it's very little, actually. It's very small. It's it's about, I think, trying to improve myself. Uh, And so trying to improve myself as my relationship with people, uh, in what I do at work, uh, in uh, maybe feeling more confident about what I do, uh, being kinder to people, understanding better uh, where they're coming from and why they say certain things in a certain way uh, and so on. So I think that's the point of being around and sticking around. It's uh, trying to be better. Oh, Sylvia, I'm I'm honestly delighted to hear that, you know, improving yourself, trying trying to be better. And just to reflect back a session I had with a, a chap this morning and he was saying, I want to earn this. I want to I, I, I want to do this job. I want to w- work in this industry. And I said, but until we've got a strong version of you, your identity, we're going to get the next step wrong. We need to make you strong. And I'm so glad that you said that in relation to how kind you are to people, what you do, your impact in the world, improving yourself, because when we're strong in ourselves, then we can make our impact. Sylvia, I love that. Thank you. And in work and daily life, so at at home, but also in in the workplace, within other people, Sylvia, what, what trends would you say that you're seeing at the moment? It's an interesting question. So I think it's, um, I think there is a little bit of um, 
greater awareness of uh, uh, the the usefulness and need to look inward um, as well. So there is, um, I think, it's more accepted uh, to to mention things like mental health, for example, uh, or uh, again, in trying to um, be kinder to people, which you know we we both know is not something that only a few years ago really people would. Uh, Talk about in a in a work setting that were probably going to be seen as softies, right? So not really someone to be considered in a leadership position or someone that you would want to invest in if you were a company. And now, increasingly, to be honest, I was at a at a panel discussion just yesterday, and one of the speakers then, um, you know, did a post on social media saying how great it was, and he he went as fine. It was a he, and that's important. He he uh, said I was so glad to join virtually. He couldn't be there, but he joined via a, a, a video call, uh, explaining that uh, he was glad that he could still join and also look after his daughter who wasn't well. And that would have been pretty imaginable just again a few years ago, and I was just so glad to see it. Um, so so that's one positive trend I'm seeing. The other one, and maybe this also reflect uh, a reflection on the fact that we are talking a little bit more about how we are feeling in terms of mental health and and uh, well in ourselves, is is that of maybe burnout. So that's one of is it. Perhaps it's becoming a little bit of a cliche and everyone is talking um, maybe a little bit too much about burnout, but also it's good that there is a conversation going around because people are feeling stressed. So it's good that we uh, that everyone uh, is um, accepting a discussion around it. And of course, now I feel there is a need to also understand what is burnout and what is just feeling tired. Or maybe you just don't want to do something because it's difficult, you have other stuff better stuff to do. Um, so these are the two trends. So there is a lot of, I think, actual real tiredness verging on burning out and perhaps in some cases potentially even depression. Uh, of course, uh, you know, not, we're not um, qualified here to describe, to define what, whether a person is depressed or not, but that kind of feeling. Both an awareness, which is definitely good uh, of discussing these things and, um, and um, Accepting that work life isn't necessarily separate from uh, personal life is they all they all overlap. Um, and again, you may have a child that you need to look after, an older uh, parent that you may need to look after, your neighbor maybe, and that's why sometimes you need to be flexible at work as well. Sylvia, what brilliant brilliant highlights of what pe- what's what's happening within people and on the subject of burnout that you that you mention or stress or, or or mental health we you know we've all got a mental health like we've got a, a physical physical health but for you personally Sylvia with everything that you you do you know to create amazement in your work and daily life and you truly truly do what strong habits do you have for yourself to build you up, Sylvia? Yes, well, so I, I'm not sure I'm doing particularly well with that, but the, the couple of things that I find tend to help are so physical exercise. And uh, <laughs> as you know, I'm not particularly um, sporty as such, but uh, I have to say when you do move your body, then, well, I end up feeling a little bit better uh, in terms of stress levels as well. And the other thing that is an immediate relief, absolutely immediate relief, uh, is picking up the phone and having a chat with a friend. So that immediately takes my mind off whatever annoyance I might have or grievance I might have at work or something I've done, maybe I feel like I should have done it better and I'm kicking myself and then I pick up the phone and speak to someone and it's like, okay, actually th- that puts everything into perspective uh, and the stress levels go down straight away. So those are my two my two things. And I have to say the second <laughs> I tend to do regularly, the, the former maybe I should do a little bit more often. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And so, you know, connecting with, with friends, hearing about their world, their, their perspective, and equally, you know, equally physically, physically moving your body. And I'm with you, Sylvia, definitely needs to do a little bit, a little bit more of more of that. And then looking at the bigger picture, you know, which is which is burnout and, and negative experiences surround surrounding that. How would you say that you avoid that, Sylvia? So, so those are the two remedies, and then trying to avoid getting to that point. Um, the one thing I do now, I mean, it's small things, right? But usually those are the things that cumulatively, 
assembling them all together um, help you um, help you get to to that um, to that uh, you know critical stage. Um, so I try not to check work emails over the weekend. Um, uh, so I put essentially put little boundaries. So I don't always always respect them, but try to put them. And they say so. What I've done within that time that's that's the time I allocate to work, and I try not to to drag it on for too long or into the weekend because otherwise very, I mean, for me at least, it, it, it ends up being quite challenging um, to um, to recover fully. And uh, I go back to the, to the social element. So catching up with friends, uh, I have a son, so try to spend as much time as I can with him, although now he's a teenager, so he's very happy not to spend too much time with his mom. Uh, but, you know, d- doing things that actually get me to interact with people. Um, those are the um, uh, those are things that tend to help also in terms of avoiding getting to that burnout stage. Brilliant. I think those are really, really helpful, <laughs> helpful me- mechanisms to to avoid it. And as you, as you say, I love that you said, you know, boundaries around work or boundaries around anything, anything in life really do help strengthen us, Sylvia. Um, and equally self-care as well. And one sign of burnout that we're stepping towards burnout is our self-care goes out the window. And that can start as simply as a woman or man as you not plucking your eyebrows as regularly as you do. You know, that's mm-hmm. a form of self-care, you know, very simple things. That's very true, Danny. And actually, no, absolutely. And I completely agree. And even just, I mean, it may seem superficial and silly, um, but also one of the routines I got into during during lockdown, and maybe others did the same. So, you know, be, you weren't really doing much, you weren't going out, you weren't getting ready, but was trying to to look after my skin. <laughs> so I started purchasing all these, you know, lovely products and realizing what, you know, would help a little bit. And again, of course, it's superficial. It's not in the priority of things. It, it's way down. But the, that's uh, spending two minutes looking after yourself also has a sort of positive uh, impact on on your self-esteem, on your mental health, on feeling relaxed. So I agree. Pre- yes. Precisely. And it's these these simple things, whether it's a skincare routine or plucking plucking your eyebrows, a yes. bath. Yes. When they go, when they go out the window, we know we're not looking after ourselves. And indeed having strong enough boundaries about what we accept and what we don't accept. So Great. Good, good picture. Um, and then looking back at the bigger picture, Sylvia, if we, you know, tr- try and avoid these negative situations like like burnout and we look at the bigger picture for you, what would you say your success looks like, Sylvia? What does success look like to you? I think that to me, um, I would feel successful. Um Oh, I feel successful when I am feel I'm proud of what I'm doing. So that element of pride, uh, because I am feeling like um, what I'm doing is is helping others, um, or because what I'm doing I'm doing competently and uh, I'm I'm making a difference, which have a difference you may you know uh, that, that may be attached to to whatever I'm doing. So yes, the element of feeling. Proud, feeling proud because you've actually you've give it you've given it your best shot. Uh, you've tried the hardest uh, you could, honestly, and uh, uh, and um, with uh, with integrity, uh, and you managed to do that without compromising, without compromising what you think is right. So that that to me, what uh, makes me feel successful. Ooh, and I love that you added on without compromising what you feel mm. is right. I I love that, Sylvia, you know, without compromising what you feel is right. And there's a leadership guru, if you like, over in America, a lot of them are in America, aren't they, called John Maxwell. And he says that leadership, which, you know, you, you certainly are, leadership is about, not, is not about making the popular decision it's about making the right decision. Not I, I, no, absolutely. And again, I don't know whether I managed to do it all the time in the, in the occasions where I had to make those decisions, those calls. But definitely, I would always think, is this... But yes, I, I don't like um, 
decisions that just feel easy uh, for you, but have a huge negative impact on someone else um, uh, that can be avoided um, or a decision that may feel that may lead to sort of underhanded consequences. And so I like, yes, so that, that's what I try to do. So something that is um, done well, competently and with integrity. Yeah. Super, Sylvia, super. And I, I certainly know that about you. And with, with understanding that you haven't got a crystal ball under your desk, nor have, nor have I, but the world is complex and you, Sylvia, have this amazing ability to make it to make it make sense, you know, especially in the world of sustain, sustainability. So looking forward, the vision for the next five years, what would you say the future looks like in, in your space, Sylvia? This is my, in my space, okay. So thinking about this concept, concept of sustainability, which is everything and nothing, uh, and it's attracting more and more um, uh, uh, you know, strong feelings uh, around this. So um, it's, um, it's something that essentially from a business perspective looks at um, the social contract that companies have with the, with the rest of us. And so how we want corporate companies to operate uh, and uh, in a way that we feel is uh, we as society feel is acceptable and also we as as members of, of this uh, system because of course we all operate within the construct of of this um, of this uh, economic and capitalistic system so what we expect them to operate but companies and also uh, by the way um, people who are represent us at a political level. And how cleverly they do so uh, within within the the uh, boundaries of the natural world, because of course a big component of sustainability is climate change and nature and the crisis that we are experiencing, uh, and uh, and so a, a lot of the often companies perhaps um, find it difficult to um, to find a new way uh, in which to operate, uh, but also some other occasions there, there may be a, a lack of understanding of the risks they actually face even forgetting about changing the way in which they should operate and and whether they should you know care about the impact on society and the environment but actually the the, the natural world they are completely interdependent uh on uh on its survival uh, in its current state and therefore that poses a risk on companies themselves on their profitability and so often uh, th those kind of risks are not necessarily well understood. So I think there is going to be progress in the understanding of, of, of uh, these elements and the conversation will only uh, continue and hopefully it will resolve uh, in, in a clear and um, useful way. Um, and I think there is also reflection to be made about the world of work uh, because we're all coming out, of course, of most of the world is coming out of you know, a very difficult um, uh, period with uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic and lockdown. And we've all kind of changed the way in which we, we work. Uh, and so I think a reflection on what we learned during uh, during the lockdowns, and for example, we are just chatting on uh, this video call, and there is a uh, there is a way of all interacting without actually moving around, and a lot of the tasks can be done from home uh, rather than commuting, going to the office, which makes it easier for a lot of us. Uh, and uh, so, again, the world of work, I think, is going to uh, continue to change and evolve, um, and flexibility will have to, I feel, be built in. Uh, whether companies like it or not, but that's something that if, that I feel that there is going to be an, a bigger and bigger pushback against companies that will just be very strict in the ways in which they want their employees to work. And then, of course, another element of of all of in all of this is technology uh, and technology facilitating the way in which we work, but also potentially replacing a lot of the tasks that we do. And whether we are concerned about perhaps losing our jobs because. Uh, an algorithm could start writing articles uh, instead of uh, one of uh, my correspondents. And what does that mean for them, for me, for the company and so on? So, so these are, the, these are the, the, the big trends. So sustainability, certainly uh, the world of uh, work and the way in which technology influences companies, economies, but also us as individuals, as, as workers. Sylvia, I find you fascinating. And I think, you know, people listening, listening to Will too, and, you know, 
hearing your vision for success, you know, includes, you know, pride and integrity. Just listening to you there, you, you know, we don't, we, I mean, we could do a whole, whole, I was going to say podcast episode, but probably a week talking about this, about the companies that are looking to be sustainable. Sustainable. We've all heard of, of greenwashing, but, you know, in my, mm-hmm. in my space, certainly wellbeing washing, which presses into what you were saying about workplace and workplace, workplace issues. So it's just so fascinating to hear your perspective on on all of this and I think you know as I say I think we've got at least a week's <laughs> another worth, worth of content <laughs> on what you've what you've just said but for the, for the purposes of this let's keep let's keep going on on you Sylvia and when life exacerbates you which it does because the journey that you've t- just taken us on and what the, what the future looks like to you in in five years with all of this that you're world and work encompasses and being a mother and being a friend and being a a leader and just being Sylvia as Sylvia needing downtime. (laughs) When, when, when life exacerbates you, what is it Sylvia that keeps you going? Um, I'll probably end up being a little bit boring and repetitive, but again, I think it's personal relations. So again, obviously, you know, some, so He's around, he keeps me going. Uh, and um, and even if, you know, I didn't feel like going, I have to. That's my responsibility. Um, but, yeah, to be honest, again, it goes back to relationships. I think for most people, I feel, is what is driving all of us, really. And it's uh, it's finding, you know, connections with, with people, people that may be part of our family or people that we meet even at work, uh, even through events, the events that, that we that we met at or colleagues or so those really in the difficult times. And I suspect this is true for most people. Having the sense of uh, working through difficult times together really makes it much, much easier or lighter, the burden certainly lighter. And it may sound like a cliche, but I find it to be absolutely true and correct. And so those personal connect connections it, are the things that actually keep all of us, I suspect certainly me, uh, moving forward, uh, rather than just sitting down and feeling sorry for ourselves and, and, and stop operating and stop doing anything. Um, so, yeah, personal connections. Well, Sylvia, thank you for your you know, real, real raw vulnerability there. Thank you so, so much. And moving, moving this forward, what values do you live by? What three values would you say that you live by? So I think I find that uh, being honest to oneself is the thing that actually is potentially fundamental. So honesty in that sense. So, that, and to be honest, it's, <laughs> to be honest, it's not necessarily an altruistic thing, but it's it's the one thing that makes you, I believe, feel really confident. Because if you are, if you get rid of all the nonsense uh, and and all the things that you wish you were, uh, and just accept um, who you are and the and things that you may want to improve in yourself, that gives you such an amazing, uh, strong awareness, and um, and it really puts people, I think, in a position of of strength. Uh, and so people I find who are very um, aware of, of um, well, the strength, surely, but also the weaknesses and the things that they want to improve tend to be the ones who actually are the strongest uh, and they can get into any situation uh, really with, um, with, the, with the right mindset. So honesty, um, I, I do tend to have, maybe I'm a little bit of an ideal, uh, idealist, so I do tend to have this sense of, you know, what is right, what's wrong, so fairness. So I try to uh, to be fair uh, with uh, with others um, um, and never be, you know, be the child who just, you know, call out an injustice uh, <laughs> at school. So um, so that's a- another, another value. Um, and uh, I guess something else, again, is this thing, uh, trying to, to create... And enjoy the the relationships that you have in your life. So being kind, I guess kindness, um, truly, truly being kind. And that's that. You know, coming back to where I introduced you, that's what struck me about you, Sylvia. Is this amazing empathy? It's palpable that surrounds you. You know, call it kindness, call it honesty, call it grace. All of this, for me, comes comes under 
empathy so you know that that truly does resonate um you know when you're on a stage or you know if we're having a lunch you know it, it truly is truly is who you are and who I know know you to be so I I you know can can really say that I know you to live these values honesty fairness and kindness and Sylvia how would you say that these keep you fully focused on living the point of your life so it's useful to to bear these things in mind. And actually, thank you for for asking me these questions because they, they, they really help to, to make you think about and reflect on those points. And so if there is a difficult decision that you have to take uh, and you go back to those points, then again, you, you look at them and um, it, they really help you, they really help to guide your decision. So am I reacting this way because of, uh, of a certain weakness as this person touched the nerve and therefore I'm overreacting maybe to something they may have said or not have said uh, and is what I'm doing fair or not. So going back to those to those values actually, to those three points do, do help to, um, to to make the um, important decisions which, um, you know, work. We, we spend so much time of during the day thinking about work, uh, working <laughs> and if you're not working, you're thinking about work potentially. So so being very much aware of those, what uh, actually motivates you and guides you, in, and guides you, then that helps uh, in uh, in setting um, your next goals. Um, I end up using so many cliches here, but so so, in, so you know when you ask me what what is the world going to look like in five years? So there is the world as I see it, the world that I write about uh, as sustainable views, the world that I end up commenting on when when I go into um, my uh, public speaking uh, and all of that. But there is also the personal world, right? And so, and the two, of course, interact, but but equally, our view of where we want to be at work in, in within that um, uh, within the world that we envision uh, may how it may look like in um, in five years, and where physically we want to be, for example, or what kind of life we want to have in five years. That those tend in my mind, or should we should try to make them overlap, right? Um, and so the world of work. So do I want to be in a profession or working for a company or maybe a group of companies that actually allow me to work flexibly so that I can also uh, have a more flexible, maybe more international life? Um, so it's interesting to reflect on where the world may be in five years and also where what kind of life you may want to have uh, in five years. Um, and so the, that one point about flexibility, I think it, it will end up being rather important uh, for me down the line uh, and having a sense of maybe freedom. Uh, and um, yes, uh, and uh, enjoying... Uh, enjoying the company of the people I yeah, feel yeah, you know, dear to me, uh, doing interesting work uh, and hopefully yeah, doing it in a world of work where I could do it from different locations and, and a variety of, of tasks as well. So I feel like I've, uh, I've digressed a bit, but... <laughs> No, well, co coming back to the point of your life, which is improving yourself, whether that's you sitting internationally here, the future and striving for that and constantly improving yourself to be stronger, brighter, bolder, etc. for that means that you will be living the point of your life, Sylvia, which is improving yourself. So before we bring this into land, is there anything else that you'd like to say? Well, um, I think, again, the, the main thing really is realising uh, they may help or may not, I don't know, but, you know, so sometimes they ask me, for example, to speak to university students or even younger students, and they end up asking you, you know, to share your wisdom. And number one, you always, the immediate reaction is, why are you asking me? I have no clue. Uh, and so I try not to stop myself and, and accept that I, I did accept to come and, and talk to them. So I should actually answer, try and answer the question. And so I think that the, really the fundamental thing is to have, uh, to feel strong enough to look inside and see what you think uh, you really want to do. In assuming, of course, the bills have to be paid and you need to have a roof over your head. So taking that 
uh, into consideration and that has to be obviously taken care of. But the the other stuff, right? The, the stuff that actually motivates you, makes you feel content and happy and, and really want to get up early uh, and start your day. So what are those things? Um, and that requires to really uh, try and, and understand yourself uh, as, as well as you can. Uh, and also to understand what feeds your energy. And uh, um, and for some people, it's actually having good people around you. I take great, great energy from, from the great people I have around me in, in my team. Uh, and actually, I very much enjoy working with them. It's, uh, it's such a strong fact. And I was, you know, bumped into... Um, I a colleague uh, some time ago, well, just a couple of days ago, actually. And uh, we were talking about the future and her career changes and all of that. And um, and I could tell that she was so, so unhappy because of the people around her at work. Uh, and I was thinking, how would I have reacted? I don't think I would have hung around, actually, as long as she did. Because, again, because I take such um, uh, great satisfaction from working together with people I admire, respect, I, and I like. Um, so those are the two things that hopefully um, others may find to be useful. But those are certainly the things that's, that's uh, helping me take decisions and make decisions. Sylvia, and I love your advice to university students or people new in their career or rel relatively young. I think, you know, taking the, the strength to look inside you and you know, I, I think this is a wonderful place to bring this episode into land, actually, in that um, the great Martin Luther King, he had a mentor or coach, we could call him a coach, and he was called Howard Thurman, but no one called coaches coaches in the 60s. And <laughs> um, um, so he, his mentor was Howard Thurman, and he said exactly this. And I think this might be good for you to share, you know, instead of that, what can people learn from me? This could be your first thought, this philosophy. In, and, and Howard Thurman said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. That's true. Absolutely. And so let's hope that, yes, that, that more and more people will, will um, manage to get to that stage. Right. So on that, Sylvia Pavoni, I am so grateful to you <laughs> to know, to have you in my world and for this fascinating, honest, kind and impactful conversation. Sylvia, thank you so very much. This has been What's the Point? I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we, we have. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Danny. It's such a pleasure. <laughs>